Hey, it's Dom here and welcome to another After Effects tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be looking at this shot here, which is a simple phone screen replacement shot. Uh, this shot's from my video all about time travel um, and you can check that out up here. I'll put a link up here. I highly recommend you watch it. It's uh, kind of fun packed, action packed, science packed, um, lots of lots packed in. Uh, so yeah, look, let, let's jump in. So I'm just going to take my footage and I'm going to create a new comp, 1920, 1080. Let's just call this uh, screen replace. And I'm going to copy and paste uh, my footage in there and I'm going to just remove the effects that were already on my footage. So this is our raw uh, background plate, our raw footage. Um, and as you can see on the screen, we had some tracking markers and also a green background, which means that if any fingers or any objects pass in front, it makes it easier, easier for us to uh, key them out basically, or key them back over the phone screen. Um, it also means we can, it's a bit easier to get the reflections back as well. Uh, now the app I've used for this to create these tracking markers in the green screen is a really cool app from Rocket Jump. Um, they have an amazing uh, YouTube channel you might know of. They make great VFX videos, all sort of action-y guns and all sorts, this chap here. Um, but this app they give away for free and um, you can customize the size of the tracking markers, the background color, what the tracking markers look like. So it's a really good tool if you're doing any sort of screen replacement. Um, okay, so let's start off by tracking our shot. We're gonna open up Mocha. We're gonna make sure the resolution's set to full because that's uh, for Mocha, that's how you're gonna get your best results. And now we're in Mocha, uh, we're gonna get our pen tool and we're gonna create a rough shape around our phone. Just drag that out a little bit. I'll drag that out a little bit there. And we're gonna track forward. So the reason I've done one around the whole of the phone as opposed to just the uh, screen is because Mocha can you, you know, likes to use as much information as you can throw at it. So if we can give it a bigger plane to track, then hopefully the more likely, you know, we're gonna get a better track. So there we go, that's finished tracking. We're just gonna scrub through just to sort of check. And yeah, you know, it looks okay. There's a little bit of movement, but um, let's, we can, we can fix that in a bit. So what we're gonna do next is add our surface, this little blue button here. And this is basically gonna correspond to our corner pin uh, effect, which is what's going to uh, put our screen into the right place. Um, we can also hit this little button here with the magnifying glass. It's gonna bring up a window when we click on one of these points so we can see exactly where we're putting them and check they're in the right place. So that looks about right. Just wanna make sure we're covering all of the green. So we're gonna come back a bit further on this one just to make sure we're covering the green the whole way down. Um, and then we just scrub through. That's not looking too bad at all. We're sort of coming off a bit here. So what we can do is go down to, into our adjust track. Um, we can set, um, let's, where's a good point? There's the, that's, yeah, that's quite a good point. Set a master for all of our points there. And then if we track through, let's go to the end first, zoom in. And we can just move these points to line up with where we want them to be. Okay, so after a bit of mucking around there, um, we've got a, uh, a better uh, track there, or not better track, but a better, you know, where our screen thing is. Um, so we're gonna hit save. Um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is get the, uh, the phone screen in there. And look, we've got this great screenshot of this fantastic YouTube channel, underrated, um, many would say. Uh, but anyway, um, I've d I did a screenshot because I know that that is the same phone that's in here. Um, I use the same phone to do the screenshot as, as what's in there. So I know that the uh, resolution and the um, aspect ratio is the same uh, and it's gonna fit perfectly because a lot of these modern screens have different aspect ratios. So there we go. Um, now I'm just gonna get rid of that and we're gonna just make the, pull that into a new composition which I'm gonna call screen. And then we're gonna pull that screen composition into our main comp. And then we're gonna go onto our background layer. We're gonna open up Mocha 
um, or at least just the tracking data of Mocha. We're going to create track data and we're going to select our track. That was our track that we did earlier. And then we're going to go to corner pin support motion blur because we want any motion blur to happen. And then we're at layer to export to, we want to put that to our screen layer. So then if we hit apply export, it's not going to put it in the right place. And that's not a mistake. I've done that on purpose, believe it or not, uh, to show you something. So the way that Mocha works with um, corner pin data is you need whatever you're putting your corner pin data onto, so in this case our phone screen here, that uh, that composition or that footage needs to be the same dimensions as your background as your background plate. Uh, and in this case it's 1920 by 1080. So actually what we're going to do, we're going to go into this comp and we're going to pre-compose this layer and call it screen pre because we still want the uh, dimensions of the um, the screenshot that we took. We want them to be the same, okay? But what we have to do in order to get that is to change this composition size to the same as the background plate. And that's gonna be 1920 by 1080. And then what we're gonna do is hit, select our screen pre-composition. We're gonna hit uh, Command, Alt, and F. And that's gonna stretch it to fit the comp. You can also right click, hit transform, transform, and then fit to comp, does the same thing. Um, uh, and that's going to fit. So basically what we're doing is we're having to stretch it out and then corner pin is going to stretch it back in. So we're just going to delete our corner pin, the current one off there, get rid of all our, all our information, and then we're going to apply export again. And the voila, voila, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a screen on a phone but it's still looking a bit pants. So what we can do to that is start by putting an edge blur on the edge because as you can see, nothing is really very uh, sharp in this image. And to be honest, anything on video really is never perfectly sharp. So we're just gonna put a little bit of an edge blur on there and actually we're gonna add a fast blur. Oh, just gonna do that again so you can see me searching. Uh, it went onto my other screen. We're gonna add a fast blur and we're just gonna put that to 0.2 maybe. Is that a bit strong? How's that looking? It's not too bad, probably pull it down a little bit, 0.1, and it just takes the edge off of that screen so it's not ultra sharp. Um, and the next thing we can do is add a little gray to that, just get a hue and saturation adjustment, take down the saturation some, and then put the lightness up a bit to sort of match this background plate. And then to help us kind of um, bed it in even more, what we're going to do is put a grade on there, um, a bit of curves adjustment, just to add some contrast to see kind of roughly what our final image is going to look like with some contrast. Because often I find um, when I'm doing like a screen replacement or, or any sort of comping really, um, you can put things in and they kind of look okay with the background footage. And then as soon as you put a grade on, the things the things that you've composited in suddenly pop out and become really obvious. So putting this kind of rough grade on now just helps me, uh, you know, composite it better. So I'm just going to also add um, some saturation on there. Oh, a bit much. Yeah, something like that. That's fine for now. And then see straight away, we can see that this screen's probably a bit too uh, saturated and we can bring up the lightness as well. Now we can play about that with that in a minute. So um, I'm also just on the grade. What I always do is just turn that to guide layer. So I know that um, whenever I hit render, it's not going to render out with that grade on it. Now the next thing or the last thing actually we're going to be doing is something that's going to really kind of um, sell it hopefully is to add reflections. So what we're going to do is I've just downloaded an image off uh, Google of this lovely pub in, I don't know where it is actually, the George um, and it's a beautiful red brick building and I know in this shot we've got some red bricks behind us and uh, I thought you know I support pubs uh, so um, keep the pubs open guys. Yeah, anyway, uh, so we're going to drag that image in here and we're going to duplicate our screen comp because basically we've already got a map there of the screen so we can just use that again. And I'm going to put that above our pub and then I'm going to use our track map and we're going to select alpha mat to uh, 
track that in there. And then we're going to scale it up something, I don't know, let's just do something like that. Now, we need to put a bit of blur on here because I don't think uh, it would be that sharp. And also, I don't want to see too much detail. I don't want to see like the George pub sign in the reflection. And then what we're going to do is we're going to screen it over. And instantly, we're sort of getting a better result, but it's still a bit much. So we're going to bring down the opacity 50, maybe a bit more. Let's go 30. Okay, that's looking a bit better. Let's have a look. And yeah, I don't think that's looking too bad, actually. Um, you can maybe also just add to the pub layer. You can maybe put a little expression on there. Alt click on the position um, stopwatch there and add a wiggle. Um, and we can put, I don't know, let's say 1 and 50. Because, okay, it's not going to be true to actually what's happening in the shot. But when that phone's moving around, the reflection is going to kind of move a bit as well. So um, that just maybe helps to sell it a little bit too. There you go. Hope you enjoyed it um, and you've learned something. That's the most important bit. And look, again, uh, please check out the full video that this is from. I'll put a link up there and a link at the end as well. Enjoy your days. Uh, peace out, whatever they say. Bye.